Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a video on using Payload CMS as my backend to a application that is fronted using React Router as a framework, which is basically React Router with all of the Remix stuff added to it. So it's a full stack framework. As I say here, React Router can be used maximally as your React framework in a setup. You lose a React Router CLI to Vite Bundler. And then you get all of this good stuff um, to build your, you can build a single page app or you can build an app with SSR, kind of, it's got the loaders, it's got the actions, and it has, you configure your routes, you know, through this route configuration file. So part of this video will be for folks that are interested in React Router version 7. And then, like I said, the other part will be focused on payload. Uh, a lot of folks use it as a CMS. I use it more as an application platform. As I say, it's a backend to build the modern web. What we're going to focus on here is authentication. And a little bit more about payload, full stack React server. It is built on top of Next. It gives you a REST API, GraphQL API, and it also gives you a local library that you can use to access everything to it. This is for both audiences, the React Router folks and for the Payload folks. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share this video. I'll leave timestamps so you can jump between the different sections that are important to you. So let's take a look at what the application is that we're going to build. First, let's walk through the back end, our back end of our application. It is Payload. I have an admin account called Aaron. And then I have two users. I have a user called Aaron1 at mail.com. You can see it has just the role of user, which means it could only view its own content. So it should only be able to view this Aaron1 at mail record. Then I have myself as the admin, which allows me to view everything. So that's what the back end of the app is like. And now the front end, that env file is set up and you can see over here, this is my application. I am logged in as the admin. You can see my role, and so you can see I can see all users. I can see Aaron and Aaron at Clearly Evative. If I log out and I log in at Aaron one at mail, I'm just a user and I can only see the one user because I'm being blocked. So that's basically all the app does. Now let's look at how we did this in payloads. Like so we'll start with the payload side first and then which is the server and then we'll go back and circle back around to uh, the React Router app. For payload, by default we get this we get this collection called users. Just a little bit of background for those who aren't that familiar with payload. You create this collection called users I'm using SQLite database in a back end, and then what what it does is between this collection sits Drizzle and then my database. Payload compiles this code, it creates a Drizzle schema, and then it applies that schema to the database for you. So you don't have to do any of that database stuff for you. And then it provides you API calls to access the content. So for example, so when I click on users, and I go here, if you see this API button, you can see here, this is the REST-based API that I'm actually using in my React router application to access the content. So this object is the result of me setting up my schemas. So let's walk through the schema. I have my slug, which is users, this admin sets the title so you can see in the page, let's go back here, sets this title up here, Aaron at mail.com. We'll circle back around to the authentication stuff here. We'll, cir we'll circle back to the access rules. Let's just talk about the fields here. So here's where I define the fields that appear in my database schema and also appear in my UI. So you can see I have my first name is text, last name text, then I define the roles that can be set, admin or user, and the default role is a user. So that's the fields that you see here. And then that allow, now let's talk about some payload specific stuff that's happening in here. So what we're doing is we're saying that 
with this user collection, I can authenticate. It creates a token. I can set the expiration time on a token. I set the information on my cookie and I'm fitting verified to false so that there's no need for email verification. Once you authenticate, you're in. And then down here, you can see where we have our access rules. So basically what this says is that anyone can create a user. For the read, I'm getting the request parameter that gets passed into this read access function, and I'm getting the user object off of it. And then the first thing I check and see if the user is an admin. If the user is an admin, then read this function will return true. That user can read this object. Or you pass a query. So the query says check if the ID equals the current user's ID. So this basically says the admin and the current user can read this record. That's what this query will do. We use the exact same for update. Users roll admin saying if you're the admin, you can update, or if you're the current user, you can update. Delete is if you are the admin, only the admin can delete, and only the admin has admin ac access. So those are the, the extra things that I've added to this collection. I've added access rights, and I've added information on the authentication. Uh, how, and just a little bit more information for folks who aren't as familiar. Once your collection is set up, you go here into your payload config. You identify collections that are supported. Here's some cores information that I also had to add to make sure that I can make my API calls appropriately. Here's, here's your payload secret that I set in the environment variable. And then here's a SQLite adapter that I'm using for my SQLite database. And so that's pretty much all we have to do to set up our backend. And now I have a backend set up where I can create users and I can authenticate with users and I can define users roles. So just to show you how that works, let's go back to my users. I've already had those existing users. Let's add another user. I create new user. Say Aaron new. We'll just say mail.com here. It doesn't matter. Password, password, Aaron new and we're just going to say a user so now we'll save that error new i'm still logged in as uh as the admin so now if i go back to my react router app see it switched me to because what's happening is that since i'm in the same browser it's using the same cookie that payload is dropping and so it knows that i'm logged in as the admin so as soon as I refresh this page, it's got that cookie and it switched me to the admin. So you can see now as the admin, I can see all three of these users. Let me log out again. Let me log in as Aaron New. And you can see, I can see the Aaron New information. So we covered the payload CMS rather quickly, but we still covered it. I have other videos on payload if you want to know more about payload. But the idea was just to create a backend that I could use to authenticate, to show you how you can use payload as the back end for your application. All right, so now let's log out from here again. And now let's look at our React Router application. And I will kind of skim over that also because I also have videos on React Router. I'll include links for both. All right, so how do you set up a React Router app? So let's go in, let's dig in here. We'll basically start with the routes file. So here in my routes file, I, I define the different routes for my app. I have my home page, my login page, and I have my register or create account page, which are defined here. Also to let you know, this app was started out, was created by using this template, this command here to create the template. That's how I got started with the app. And then also, let's just, for the payload folks who are curious, I created this by saying create payload app. It takes you to a series of prompts. The important one, if you want to follow this demo, is when it comes to the database, I selected the SQLite database as the database. So back to React Router. The did not change anything in my root file, just kept it basic. 
because the focus was on just a simple application to support authentication. So let's let's just hop to the files that matter. I will check in all the source code into a repo so you can take a look at the repo yourself. So let's look, let's start with our home route. So we go into our routes folder, we look inside of home. Quickly for the React Router folks out there and Remix folks, same as Remix, you have your loaders and you have your actions. When the page loads, we check and see if we have a user. If we don't have a user, we redirect the login. If we do have a user, we make an API call to get all users. We, the important part that matters is we get the cookie. We add the cookie to the request so that it can be authenticated because the payload cookie gets dropped. So let's do this. Let's see if I log in here and we open up my browser and let's look at our tools. All right, so if I look at my application and we look at our cookies, we can see I have this payload token. This is the cookie that's giving me everything I need to be logged in. See, no cookie, not logged in. Login, payload token is a cookie. All right, so what I'm doing here is on all my API calls, I'm getting the cookie from the request header. I'm adding it to the header for my API request. This URL is a URL of our payload server. I'm calling the API request with the credentials included and the cookie, getting my response. And then I get the user by default. Well, let's see how we get the user. I get the user by with this check user function. I pass in request to check user. And check user, very similar to the previous API call. I set the cookie by getting the cookie, which will give me this payload token. I make the API call. This API get users me returns the current user. So I have the current user. So that's how I get this value. This is the current user. This is the API call to get all users. And because I'm just a user, I can only see myself. I can't see the rest of the users. And so that's how we know that our authentication and our role is working correctly because otherwise you would see them all. And then down here inside of, we'll skip the action for now, but down here inside of my page, I get my loader data passed in as a prop to my page. I pull off the users and the all users. See, they return there. And then this is just a bunch of styling, but in the end, I render my first name, last name. I extract the roles so we can get the role there. And then I just loop through here and display all the users. So that's when you're logged in already. All right, so that's the home page. Let's go back to my routes. The login page. Okay, on the login page, the loader does the check user call like we did before, except it's a little bit different. If I have a user, I redirect you back to the home page. Otherwise, I set my user to null and error to null. We come into our login page. I just rendered, let's log out. Let's go to login. So here, let's kind of move this to the side. I render my login UI. This is all basic stuff, all basic stuff. I have this register link, which just takes you to a new page to register. Then down here, I have my login submit. But here for my login, I submit and with React Router, the submit will call my action. My action takes the form data. The form data will be these two fields, the email field and the password field. I'm using Zod to basically parse this. I set up my schema up here to validate my, I need an email, I need a password, minimum six characters. If everything's validated, so if it's not success, I return the error. Otherwise, I have my values inside of result data, and then I call my login user function. I pass the request along the way. You go to login user. My email and password were passed in. Call the API endpoint to log in my user. I get my response. I send my response back. If I have errors, return the errors. If I don't have any errors, then I redirect to my home page. And then I set the cookie 
using the token that I got back from my login. And I'm setting the this inf basically the token and the expiration date I got back from my login request. I'm sorry, for my login response. And I'm setting my cookie when I redirect to my home page. So then now my home page, as you can see, nothing's here. So if I log in, my cookie was set. I'm authenticated and I'm in. So that's the login route. And then finally the register route. Starting at the top, similar to login, we have a schema to validate. We have all the fields. Our loader checks the, for our user. If there is a user, we redirect to home. Let's jump down to the form here. Nothing magical, just a regular form capturing the fields. So on submit, we call our action. Here's our action. Get the form data, parse it to make sure it's success. Then we pass all the fields we need to our create user function. Our create user function creates the user. Once again, we don't need a cookie or anything for creating the user because anyone create a user. And then if it's successful, we return the user. So we go back to our register page. If my response, if I did not get any, if I got any errors and throw the errors, if I didn't get any errors, then now I actually need to log in. So I take the email and the password that I was provided. I log in the user. If there's errors, throw errors. Otherwise, same thing that we did before on login, redirect back to home page, or basically index route, set the cookie, and we're off and running. Once again, one to keep this short, I'm going to end it here. Primary focus was just to show how you can use payload CMS on the back end to be the beginnings or the platform of an application that you could build. And since I do work with Remix, I wanted to see how it could be implemented with Remix. Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, I'll probably do a couple of other front ends integrated with this same back end application. So stick around or leave some recommendations on other integrations you would like to see with Payload CMS and pretty much anything else. Or if you liked the React Router, please drop a link and make some suggestions on some other things you'd like to see being done with React Router. Thanks and get you next time around. Bye.